maybe it was not a good idea to say we were going to talk about numbers today because there are less people today. I don't know. Shall we start? Pia? Shall we start? Uh, uh, bellissima mattina. Uh, numbers. Numeri. Numeri. Uh, primo, you remember we, um, we talked about the um, <coughs> databases uh, where you, you can go and uh, seek from, for previous projects to understand a bit how it works. I, I, I mentioned the um, EST, European Shared Treasure uh, Database. Uh, Adam is for uh, Leonardo da Vinci. And here, for us, on a Grundvig multilateral project, we can use EVE. So you reach the uh, EACEA uh, main website. Uh, you remember? We, we uh, at some point uh, on uh, Tuesday, we've been going through the, uh, how we access the uh, documentation to get all the information. So EACEA, there is this link, Lifelong Learning Program, that we click upon. And here at the bottom page, you have this um, EVE e-platform. So, Uh, you have here um, information you can you can you can find on um, on, on the purpose of Eve. You access the platform. Can you see it? Did you see how I access the platform? Okay, you are on the uh, on the Eve website. Here you can see the connection with the European Commission. That's the Directorate General of Education and Culture. DGC. Buongiorno, ciao. Come on, come on, come on. Buongiorno, Patricia. Buongiorno. Hello. Buongiorno. So Here, I don't know if you know about all about Eve. You know this movie? A fantastic movie. Uh, but, well, they use it here. Probably they knew, so they... All about Eve. So, uh, uh, I think it's an Oscar winner movie. So here you have the link of the platform. And here you have a, a user-friendly search tool. Really easy to... So I've been looking at something interesting for us today. Uh, first of all, here you have the uh, select, you have the, the uh, let's say, the uh, action, the areas, and in the program, sub-program, transversal, etc. So we know that we're looking for a uh, Grundvig multilateral project, which is in uh, the education and um, training. And here, uh, we are looking at the uh, lifelong learning program and here you have all the uh, let's say the sub programs the sectorial programs that we mentioned uh, before you you can see that there are other other uh, programs linked to the uh, education training uh, area so we're looking at Grundvig And you have here the uh, main uh, actions on, the, um, on this program. You don't have, for example, IST workshops and etc. But you have the, uh, the one that uh, concern projects on a, on a bigger scale. So here, on the multilateral project, so we click here. Uh, and then look for, here you will put the, the topic you eventually are working on, okay? 
I remember I found something interesting in uh, psychology. So, can you see here the search button? He needs a bit of coffee this morning. Okay, you have uh, a list here of 43 result, uh, search results for psychology. Okay, so you can click here on, on, so on all the projects if possible. I choose at that point my opinion, my vote because I'm, I'm also uh, working a lot on human rights and democracy within this uh, Millennium Develop Development Goal uh, topic that, I, uh, that I'm, I like to, to work on. So here you have the Grundvig multilateral project, the title of the, uh, of the project. You have a uh, basic information. This is a, a, a number from the, the database from uh, EACEA. Uh, and you have an abstract. And basically you, you can see, for example, when I mentioned the, the question of uh, the, the, the situation before your project and the situation after the project, you can see here that they were very precise. My opinion, my vote will reach at least 1,000 people with learning difficulty, LD, 4,000 facilitators. I mean, how pre precise is that? Huh? They, they knew what they were talking about. I'm an evaluator. I received this project. I mean, these guys have been working on it. OK, it's solid. So they understood reason for the project that only 0.1% of European citizens present significant learning difficulties. Well, that's the beginning of the, the birth of the project. And at the end of the project, they intend that at least 30% of people must be very Thirty percent. I'm 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 speaking too loud, so I have to lower my voice. Um, Thirty percent of people contacted by the project will enhance. They they will improve, get better, their um, uh, awareness about exercising their political rights. You remember when I referred these people coming from immigrants? They they can't express themselves, so they can't. They can have a weight on the decisions on on their uh, economic uh, social life, whether they want it or not. Oh, by the way, it was an Italian uh, association, okay, who uh, developed this project. So you have the contact, as I said to you, the uh, website. You also have the, the the number. You can you can check this number, and you can ch check Google. Remember the superhero, and you will find a lot of things linked to that on Google database too. So this is a good way to start to, to, for your initiating phase. You know, you know already your situation, you have a good idea of your project, you have a very strong um, uh, reason to do it, you know it's a good thing, but you check anyway uh, in all uh, ways possible, possible to understand if your project is really uh, something uh, interesting beyond the situation you're living where you are. Okay? Giorno? So this is uh, what I wanted to mention to you this morning, plus another situation, another thing. Mm. I didn't open it, but uh, I think it would be interesting to check it out.
Grünweg, 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 Grünweg. You remember this uh, documentation that I referred? When I was mentioning the uh, legal documents, this uh, this is the um, this is the uh, you can you can see it here, but. This is the 1720 decision, 1720, 2006, European Commission, that I mentioned at the beginning of uh, the, the process on where you can find the pertinent information that uh, gives you the policy of uh, all the program. Okay, this is the, kind, this is the, the aspect, this is the look that the document have when you, uh, you assess it. And you will, you will see that all that I've been saying about using the European uh, dimension, the European uh, context, etc., etc., uh, at all points of your project, for example, here you can, have, you can see that there is a reference to all the processes and all the situations that are, were, are linked to this program, such as the Bologna process, the Lisbon uh, European Council, all, 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 all is there. Okay, so it's kind of, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the book of law, criminal law and all that stuff, I mean, good luck, but it's very interesting anyway. Another document, for example, that I've not, which is linked to, to, to this uh, framework, I, I, I guess you, you remember I mentioned the Bruges communique, which is part of the Copenhagen process. This is le, the look of the... Uh, <laughs> document okay it's it's um in this case uh it's a communique communicating in french means uh, communication something that uh, okay and you can see here all the, the this if 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 i should uh, well you will see you will say that uh, i'm always each time i'm mentioning a, a document or some something you will you will hear me say this is important, get it, read it, and all that stuff. Just for you to have an idea, um, it's impossible, obviously, to remember and to know all the details of the uh, 2,000 or 3,000 pages of, of information that you should be aware of. But you have, to, you have to be able to connect what you are doing on the ideas, on the topics, with the pertinent information, okay? You have to learn how to jungle with them. Even if, you, for example, yesterday I didn't remember uh, precisely where to find a tape on the, the cost selling of the staff, for example. But since I've been using the uh, uh, budget table, uh, very often I knew where to find the, the, the information. And I knew also that it would be in part one, where is the uh, financial provision, which explain everything about how to how to fill the, the, the application form, okay? So that's what you have to be able to, to do, to jungle. So here, for example, global vision, uh, not global vision very much, right? Because it's very bright. Uh, buongiorno. Global vision for vocational education and training 2020. Okay, I know that it's uh, very difficult to see that. But uh... obviously, if you have a look at this part of the document and you see uh 2020, you make, you make the connection, okay. This is the highway, all right? 
So now you have uh, something wrong? I knew that. I should have this thing, you know, like Shakir. Okay, uh, so I wanted to mention this documentation this morning for you to have an idea of what I was talking about uh, with this documentation. Now, another thing uh, that I think it's in interesting for you to uh, understand how, how it works. Okay, when you um, apply and when you have, uh, when you have been uh, selected, you, you find in the uh, EACA website the publication of the results. And the publication of the, result, the results is basically a PDF document with a list of um, of, uh, of the, the, the name of the project that, that had been uh, selected. I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm under the impression that the, the sequence of the project is linked to the, the best, from the best to the lowest uh, uh, rank. So the first project here might be the one who, which had uh, received the best punctuation, but I'm not sure about that. So, in, in yellow, I selected all the Italian projects. You see this li little uh, code here? IT means Italy. And in uh, 2012, this year, if I'm not wrong, uh, there were 16 approved on these 61 applic winners. So it makes this uh, big punctuation of Italy. That's why I mentioned maybe I should uh, spend some time here to learn how you do. <laughs> okay, this is another example. Um, yeah, another thing. You remember I, uh, I mentioned to you the uh, grant agreement? When you have uh, your project selected, then you receive a contract, a, gra a grant agreement. It's a contract. Well, this is Portuguese. So I feel uh, pretty much in my comfort zone right now. Hmm. So you have this contract with the number of the uh, approved project. It's basically saying that uh, it's a financial contract. You have, in this case, this was a Leonardo da Vinci uh, partnership, a small scale. You have here the, the, the name of the national agency. In that case, you will have the, the name of the ACA agency, which is the uh, executive agency of the program. And here, you have the name of the beneficiary. Okay, so it's, it's a contract between them and between you. And then in the contract, you will have all the... Uh, you know, all the details of how it's going to work. In this case, it's a small-scale uh, project. It was, uh, there were lump sum. Lump sum, I don't know if you remember that. I mentioned it, uh, I think, uh, Monday. Lump sum are a fixed uh, amount of money. And in this case, you use this amount of money to create mobilities, meaning you go and have meetings in other countries. Lump sum, fixed amount, amounts. Okay. Um, you uh, you can also um, well, I think it's enough for that. So we've been. Oh no, first. Let me go back to here. I would, I would like to be sure that everybody uh, understood the, 
articulation between G1, which, is, uh, which are the work packages, G2, the deliverables, and also when we came to G3, which is still in the um, uh, Word document application. And that's where you put basically uh, for each work package, okay? You put the partners Cost day staff. You actually don't put uh, numbers, uh, euros. You put how many days these people, according to their category, will interfere, will, will work on the work package. You remember that? Is it clear for you? I mean, you were not here, but. Uh, would you like to, me to come back a bit on this? Babene? Anyway, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be coming back to it with the uh, table. But what's important, uh, first of all, this is a, I would say this is a golden rule. What I'm saying is not 100% uh, like this, but but uh, ideally, you have your project draft, let's say 95%. The project draft is my way of doing things, my way of designing the project, my way of putting the number the way I want to understand them, my Excel sheet tables or my micro Microsoft project manager uh, software um, use, okay? This is me building my project. So, in my opinion, you should have this practically done before starting working with the applications, which doesn't mean that during this process, during this process, you do a lot of things and obviously, you have a look, even a close look, at all the material available for the application. For example, the guides. Obviously, you have your project, you're working on your project, but you have a look at, your, at the guides for you to understand what is uh, eligible cost, what is not eligible cost, what is the provision, how it works, how, how the table is organized for you to be able then to fill in the information such as <clears throat> the calendar, such as the travel and subsistence, etc. You can do that, but you do your way first. If you understand your way, I mean, obviously, if, if you're ready uh, for, for the application, it means that you understand perfectly what you're doing. So it will be easy to answer to the questions. It's obvious, right? When you are late, sometimes you cut some, some steps, but uh, you should start like this. Then you have the uh, Microsoft Word application, and then the Microsoft Excel. At this point, it's obviously completely up to you. You can, you can perfectly uh, start working with uh, the work plan and the budget and then go to uh, D1 and D, D5, and all the D part and, and the F part. Because the work plan, you have the work plan here, which is per G, is linked with the budget. Sometimes, uh, you know, the initiating phase, th there's, there's a, a, a critical pass, path at uh, each phase, okay? You have the initiation, then you have the planning, then you have the uh, execution, then you have etc. 
But obviously, this is not a closed door. May I help you? Hello. Okay. Even, even when you are executing your project, because you have the change plan, you might sometimes in the, in, the, in the course of the project implementation, you have a, a new idea of um, exploitation. So don't, don't when, when, when I'm saying there are phases, well, it's, if you have a, a little, uh, an experience on project management, you know that things happen and it's evolving. It's not changing completely, but it's not closes door, closed doors. Okay? So, some animation, can I help you? Oh, your pen. Ah, the bigger one. I don't know. Yeah, because this one is not so good. It's okay, I don't know, it must be somewhere. Um, <clears throat> Don't worry. No. no. So, so um, at this at this moment, I think it's uh, well. It, I, I, I never do it the, the same way. I, th I think all the projects I'm working on are, are change. Sometimes it depends on the context, etc. But. Uh, What's important here is for you to understand that this G3, and then we will see that uh, later uh, during the day, the explanation of work package expenditures, this part of the application, okay, I remember this is what I'm talking about. Just for you to, to have an idea. You can keep it. Um, this, this is the moment of the, uh, the big time coherence, cohesion, makes sense. And as I said, if you are 95% ready, it, it's, it already makes sense. The only mistake that can happen when you fill in the application form at this point is instead of uh, reading five, you read uh, seven and you, you mistake in the numbers, but you are not searching for the information. You're ready, okay? And remember that um, filling the forms is also a partner. You remember the, the winners of uh, Excel fans, Italian women? Okay, it's a teamwork. So, I'm not specialist in accountancy. I have, an, I have a clear idea how it works, but I count on my partners to help me to build a, actually for the last three years, I've been working with two, two person who are really uh, good at it. Not only on accountancy, but also on budget project design for, for uh, this kind of applications, an even bigger scale application, okay? So, what you will put here in G3 is what you're going to use in the Excel tab. Okay? So here you remember you have, for example, um, the partner one, two, uh, sorry. I'm already, you know, I told you. No numbers for me. Three, okay, three partners. And then here you have uh, uh, partner two and partner three also uh, involved. And here you have also partner one and partner three eventually. And let's say that on, uh, on this part uh, you have only, uh, I don't know, uh, partner one. Okay. So here, the country, the short name of the, um, of the organization, and, and the number of days 
for the staff. Let's go back to the example that I used yesterday. This is the work package number, let's see, take the management. Okay, so on G3, you have the leading partner, Finland, the name of the, of the, uh, the short name of the organization, and you have here, You can see nothing, right? Okay. So, by categories, you have, for example, in this uh, work package, all the partners involved. I, I, now I'm telling you because you can see it. And all the partners have a, a quantity of days per category accounted for this uh, work package. Okay? 38 for the manager at uh, leadership uh, level, six days, between three or six days for the other partners, according to their involvement in this work package of management. Okay. Now, I know this is a very serious moment of the preparation of the, the project, but I, I'll try to be a bit less drama on the number, because this is not uh, so complicated if you have the right competence with you and if you understand exactly what you're going to do. I mean, if my project was to travel to Bitonto to take picture and make a movie, to build a marketing tool to sell a final product of excursion, a vi um, uh, touristic visit in Bitonto, I have a clear idea that how I have to do that. I have to pay a trip, I will have to book a hotel to, to be able to stay five or ten days in Bitonto, it will cost me this, the plane ticket will cost me this, maybe I have to, uh, I don't know, I have an idea what I have to buy, what I have to use and what I have to do, and I have an idea that uh, maybe uh, because Puglia region is so beautiful and so many places to go, maybe I need uh, 10 days, 5 days is too short. And maybe if I want to save money, instead of doing all by myself, I'll find some people to help me uh, on, the, on the site in, in order to stay 5 days only instead of 10 days. This is project management. I didn't uh, do the trip yet. Okay? So. The objective of uh, this session is, uh, I have to tell you everything today, I need to drink a lot of water today. Uh, so we'll have a look at the MS uh, Excel file document. I'm always saying MS because uh, Microsoft, because that's what I use. A lot of people work with Apple, with Mac, uh, Macintosh, while well, I'm not using it, so that's why I'm always saying uh, MS. Okay, uh, the specific objectives are um, structured, we'll look at the structure, and if we can, we can see it right now, I'll explain it to you in uh, detail, the basic uh, rules of uh, filling the document. Again, objectivity and simplicity, and uh, obviously accuracy of the content. It's always the same thing. Be very clear, well, with number, it's a bit easier, obviously, because two is two and four is four. Okay, um, an overview of the uh, financial uh, provision. I don't think you will be able to see anything today. Can you see something there? Yeah? Okay.
Uh, oh yeah, I understand what you want to do. Maybe this, uh, this um, yellow and green thing, yes? No? Oh, no, 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 no. I thought it was a folder. I might, I might need that. Is it better? Can, can, you come, can you come here? Do you think it's okay? It's okay, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we need to make it a bit darker. Grazie, Antonio. Ok. So, um, I uh, show you the uh, grant agreement, which is uh, it was a simple example, but basically it's a contract between you and uh, the uh, operational agency, which means that um, when you have a project selected, you it's 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 not it's didn't it didn't start yet. You're very lucky and you're, you've been working well and you're selected. But the process is not over. It's not definitive. At this point, since I never applied as applicant or only as partner, I, I don't have all the details, but you have all the information on the document that I've uh, brought with me and which will be available. You receive this grant agreement uh, saying all the details and explaining all the details of the arrangements of everything that have to, to do with the, um, the, the project. So, um, you have to, to guide you. You have uh, the guides that I told you about. The part one, for example, there is a specific information on the provision of the financial provision on the, the project. You have the instructions for uh, applicant. This year, there is a new thing, that is the info kit. It's kind of survival kit, with a lot of tips from the uh, agency on the financial aspect and just the financial uh, aspect. You have a very big time document, which is uh, the financial regulations. You have, for example, your accountant. I don't know if it's in Italian also available, but your accountant will have a close look at this. This is kind of a heavy thing with the technical uh, stuff. I have the, uh, I think I, I brought the pictures of the document so I can sh show you in a moment. One project, one grant, okay? Don't apply with uh, your project idea to five, okay, I'll choose the best. No, no, just one application. Uh, no profits, these are the key, key things. 
The project is to be uh, is a co-financement and it's to be used to pay things. At the end, you might eventually uh, prove that you uh, save money and this money will not be uh, given to you. Okay? If you have a grant agreement of uh, two, uh, 2,000 euros and you spend only 1,000 euro, you have no reason you receive the other 1,000 euro. But since you're working on real costs and you're telling the truth, you're not doing anything wrong, everything goes well, okay? Um, no refund, meaning that uh, if your project starts and um, you buy an equipment, it's eligible. You can take it uh, in, a, in the account uh, uh, system of the project. But if you buy the equipment before, it's not eligible. But you can, uh, you can put it on the uh, indirect cost, the, seven, the top 7% of indirect cost, because obviously in your project, you already have computers, you already have uh, your office and all that stuff. Just say that you and these are these are eligible costs. Um, as I said, uh, I'm repeating myself a bit, but uh, this this is an incentive. This is for you to go. This is not something for for uh, you know to to um, to make it happen. You make it happen, and this grant is to help you. Okay, let's uh, we we give you a little help. Okay, this is an incentive, right? You're not going to, to apply for a project because you have a lack of money. Okay, um, you have uh, specific rules in details. It means that when you have your grant uh, signed and your project starts, sometimes there can be some changes. It's possible. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, under a framework, okay? It's all uh, structured. Okay, uh, the type of financing, I mentioned already the lump sums. For example, on a mobility pro program, you will receive, for example, uh, your project is approved and you receive according to the number of... Uh, mobility means um, uh, number of person and number of uh, uh, trips that you're going to, to do during a project. And, uh, for example, if you... Um, you apply on a project and you have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 12 mobilities, 12 people will travel, etc. You receive a fixed amount of money to pay the expenses of these mobilities. And according to the number of mobilities, the amount is different from uh, 8,000 to 22,000 euros in Portugal. But in other countries, it different. it's different. In Romania, for example, the amounts are very low. And sometimes you have to something, I, I think I mentioned it uh, later. When you look at the tables, it says the top amount you can receive on this, on that. It doesn't mean that if you're approved, you will receive 100% of this top amount. You can receive half of it. This is an indication of what you can get at the maximum, not you will receive 200. No, no. Between 0 and 200, you will receive something. Okay? So you don't plan your budget according to the selling cost. You don't plan your project according to the uh, financial tables. You plan your project according to what you are going to spend. Okay? I can't be more uh, clear about that, right? Because if you don't, you will have a big surprise. Lump sums. Uh, flat rates, or in the accountancy language, scales of unit costs. To, uh, for, to travel to uh, Belgium, you only have a right, uh, you, you can only receive a top of uh, 232 euros a day for travel and subsistence. And if you need two days, you will receive 464 euros. These are units, uh, scales of unit cost, and these are flat rates. Uh, 
percentage of uh, reimbursement. If you have a, a, um, a cost, well, you can receive 20%, 30%. This is another way of receiving money from the uh, uh, project. Yeah, I was fast. Any question? I'm, I'm going to ask you at each slide if you have any question, just to be sure that, uh, all right? Yeah, I could, I could be, before that, I could show you. So this is the guide, the first part. part. And in, the, in this part four, you have financial provisions. Okay, this is guide, the, 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 the guide, the, the user guide, part one, for 2013. Be sure to use the last version, 2013, because they might have some, some uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't check what, what's new, but uh, you, you be sure that uh, you, um, you check it out. And you have a, well, it's better to show you here because you can see. You have a, in this document this kind of tabs, okay? And you have here, for example, what I said the other day, the maximum uh, amount that you're allowed to consider for a day staff according to their categories. Uh, and you will see, obviously, that uh, it's a bit polemic because uh, in Romania they receive 51 euros a day for a manager and uh, in uh, Belgium they receive 460 euro. Well, this is really polemic when we work with partners. It's a bit complicated. Um, then you have the table 5B, which are the max maximum eligible daily rates for um, subsistence costs for these multilateral projects, networks, and accompanying measures. So you see the 232 uh, euros per day in Belgium. And if you go to Italy, you've, uh, you can consider €247 Euro, Euros per day. Oh, it's a good uh, thing. In the north, it's okay. It means that if you have a, you will see if you have a trip, a journey to realize in, uh, if I have a journey to realize in Italy and two of my staff will have to go, I consider 247 uh, euros maximum uh, would be the, the top uh, amount that I, can, I might receive, I might receive for my staff. But obviously I know how I'm going to need, what I'm going to need, because I'm working with real costs. Okay? Yeah. Yes, yes. For example, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, subsistence, yes. To, to, yeah. There are two different things. On, on the subsistence, I'm, I'm referring on, only on the uh, hotel, uh, food. Viaggio e pranzi e cene. On the truck. dobbiamo considerare, a seconda del paese dove vai, hai un costo giornaliero e poi devi sommargli il costo di viaggio. Italian manager 230, for example. 
is uh, uh, for my manager, for uh, the Italian manager who uh, travel to yeah. Portugal and uh, yeah. so... Uh, That's the amount you can consider to receive to support his uh, subsistence my in staff, Portugal. The sta okay, in Portugal. So Italian then staff you have another column to, to put the estimation of the, 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 the plane ticket, for example. Yes. No, not ah, not for mobilities, cost. but for ah, activities. No. The staff cost is no, here. Costi per le mobilità e costi per le attività. Yeah. Sorry. The staff cost Quindi is here. I costi dei manager erano per le attività. Hello? Cioè nel progetto. No, I'm sorry. The staff cost is here, table 5A. Hmm, not bad. And table 5B, the subsistence costs. Mangiare. <laughs> Uh, so, you will see on the table uh, in a better way how it's, it's organized. And also on the table, Excel table, you will see that uh, there is this, uh, sorry, these numbers are, are there too, selling costs. Is that clear? Is that okay? Va bene? Sorry? You mean it's a very good... Uh, oh yes, but is it just for a person for all, all the stuff? Just one person? It's not, it's not the same thing actually, the regional problem. It's not so It's uh, lower. Okay. You 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 can speak in Italian if you want, and don't don't uh, don't don't bother if if you together. I mean, if you are on the same level language, please use the Italian to be more. Is it is it okay? Is it's very important to understand that at this point. So. You stay here, right? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Grazie mille. Uh, okay? All right. So, um, flat, co uh, flat costs, maximum uh, grants, basic rules. Yeah, things that I would like to add. So, you have the daily staff costs. We've just been uh, discussing about that. The daily subsistence rates on these guides. Uh, yeah, just for you, for you to have a notion right now, you have a maximum grant of uh, 150,000 euro for uh, a year project, which, which uh, will represent 75% of the total budget cost. Well, all the projects that I've been looking at, they receive 74.9% uh, or 75%. I didn't find any project on the last five years receiving only 60%. So, for me, it tells me that if you don't have the right punctuation, you don't even have the possibility to have a grant, but anyway. So if you go to a 12 to 24 month, two years uh, uh, project, you, you, can, you, you might receive 300,000 euro as the 75% of the total amount of the project, which is uh, let's say uh, you will have to add a hundred thousand euro if you are working in this framework. Four hundred thousand, seventy-five percent come from the uh, European Commission, three hundred thousand, and hundred thousand between new partners. At this point, um, I guess you know that uh, the partners I, I identified with P1, P2, P3, work package, work package. WP1, P2, uh, WP2, etc. Okay. Um, so let's let's start looking at the table. Okay. Tell me, you can see something? No. 
you can see it here, but uh, the, these, these colors are different. They are different, okay? I'm doing nothing, huh? I don't even move. So the orange part are the uh, inputs for um, the, uh, the, the, the partners that are involved in the project. Uh, and you have uh, the, what, what you call the third countries, which are the countries that are not part of the um, Euro European Union, 27, but are eligible. There is a bunch of, I don't know all the countries, but uh, I give you an example. Uh, in France, for example, they have the, um, they have the overseas uh, departments, such as the French Guiana. It's eligible. Yeah, I believe uh, yeah, Turkey, for example, is not in European Union, but they are eligible for. Uh, uh, but I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that uh, Turkey is considered the third country. I think uh, Turkey is uh, in another framework. Maybe uh, under the enlargement. I'm not so easy at this, but um, I know Turkey is eligible, but I'm not sure if it's considered a third country or not. I don't think so, because, yeah. So, uh, blue is uh, exclusively for the uh, lifelong learning program eligible countries. Yellow is only for the third countries. You will understand then what only that and what only that. Because on the, on the different uh, framework countries, the, the uh, criteria, the eligible uh, part is different. Okay, what, for example, subcontracting a uh, third country is not allowed. Things like that. And the uh, evaluator obviously wants to save time and, and, and energy, and he wants to understand exactly where are the things when he look at the table. So that's why, I guess, they separated the things. Since a third country doesn't, uh, do not obey to the same rules that LLP countries, better to have them separated. Gray is actually a part of the, uh, the, the uh, tab form that, are, that is here, there for, for information for you to, for example, yesterday I was looking at the sailing cost, the top cost you can use, oh, you can use, it's a bad word, but the, you, you, you'll be aware of for the uh, application, it's there. And also, I guess you, you're not going to be able to see it. They are, for example, this, the sellings, that's what I said, the, the cost, for example, per staff, per country. Um, you have uh, the maximum grants you can uh, apply for per action. That's about it. And here, the, the, the table 12 basically indicates you it's the final result. It's where it all fits. You've been working well and all that stuff, so when you look at this table, it's all look good, okay? But you don't touch it. You will see also that uh, on the table there are parts, uh, there are cells you can't access, you don't touch, and you, do, you must not touch. Okay, what else I could say before starting? Oh yeah, um, the, when you uh, starting uh, filling the form on the LLP and third countries, you start from table one to table two, table three, table four, etc. Because the table seven is uh, expenditures. It's some kind of um, summarize. It's summarize. The, uh, the whole process it takes, takes information from cells and, and gather it in the in final document. Because here you will see that um, there are maximum uh, uh, allowance on percentage of the total budget allowed uh, linked to some, some costs. For example, you're allowed to consider only a top of 7% of indirect costs you are allowed to subcontract until 30% of the total budget, budget uh, cost. 
you're allowed to consider until a maximum of 10% of equipment. Okay? I, I shouldn't say that, but uh, generally, uh, well, I have different examples, but let's say most of the project applications I've been uh, looking at have 50% of staff costs and the rest is uh, depend on the project. But generally 50% is uh, kind of um, linked to the staff and the rest linked to the, the other part of the uh, project, such as the subcontraction, subcontracting, equipment, and also travel and subsistence, okay? So, uh, other basic rules. You start from one to six. Uh, also, when you go to the third country part, if you have a third country part, you go to eight, table eight, nine, because it influences table 10, etc. So you, you, it's kind of logic, it's a, it's a logic uh, process. Um, you will see that there are cells that you don't touch. The codes for the, country, for the partners is P1, P2, P3, so you already have all this organized. You, oh yeah, and you enter everything manually, you don't copy paste. And believe me, this is very important. You're going to make a big mess if you don't. You, it's, it's a problem. I think it's forced, they force you to do it because you enter everything, every number, everything you put manually, you don't copy paste. You can try but uh, I don't, I really don't uh, recommend it. This is really uh, out of the... Um, um, uh, we can do that when we're working on it. Okay, you, you, not really, huh? Okay, the first table says, uh, I'll tell you that because uh, other basic rules are, for example, um, on the um, tables two, on some tables, you will select the country first. All this information is on the guides. I'm telling you some, some, some rules, uh, I know you don't take any appointments, but it's just for you to understand that there are, it's cr when I started saying, uh, using that, be before, before reading, uh, starting filling the, uh, the tab, be sure that you've been through that. Because it gives you exactly, on the part one, for example, it gives you exactly the instruction for ap applicants, for example. It gives you exactly all this process on, on, in details. Be sure to understand it before. It's okay. I mean, if you are going to fill in the tab, you will see a big red thing, or yellow thing in this case, and you will understand you're doing something wrong. But there is a kind of logic behind it, okay? Um, If in my project there are third countries, mobilities from European partner countries to third countries are uh, found? Yeah. Okay. I don't, I mean, uh, it's not bulletproof what I'm saying, but uh, uh, I never work with third countries. Uh, I sure, I'm, I'm sure the information is there, but if you plan a meeting in a third country, I, I have a strong uh, belief that I will be financed. If, if I read that I'm not financed, I will not do it. There's no, un, un, unless it makes a big sense in my project. Yes, I mean, if you project... If you want to, um, to have some exploitation of results in a third yes. country and uh, you want to organize something uh, there. Well, you know, when, when it's, I guess the 7% uh, bag might help you. I don't have the right answer for that, but uh, if you plan, if your project is to, to create uh, a way that um, uh, growing uh, strawberries in uh, Togo will make the community enhance their capacity building and all that stuff, you'll have to go to Togo to, to, to I mean, so it makes sense in your project for you to go to Togo. If it's not eligible, uh, maybe uh, it makes sense to receive uh, uh, the third country, sorry, in, in, in Italy and teach people so they will be uh, able to multiply there. So you organize your, your project first, 
uh, rule, golden rule, you, be, you design your project according to what the project is. Forget the European Union, you have a project. After that, you don't have enough money, you look for the right program. I propose to Synergia to work on Grundvig multilateral project because um, it's, it's kind of a wide uh, project on, on different aspects. In there you have a lot of information how to build budgets. There are some uh, application you don't need a budget table such, of, such as for example Leonardo partnerships and all that stuff. Main, all the, the multilaterals you need a budget table. So, uh, but Grundvig multilateral project, don't, don't fall in love with it. I mean, you will choose the right program for the right project, okay? Um, you don't use currency symbols in the tabs, only numbers. Uh, no fractions, meaning uh, only, uh, I don't know how you say it in English, you don't use... Uh, uh, 2.3, 3.5, only uh, numbers. No uh, percent symbols, no symbology. Forget the symbols. Um, you have, uh, I, I work like that, but all the totals are on the top part of the, the tables, not on the bottom. I think it's, a lot of people uh, use this this way. Um, there are some uh, limitations on characters, uh, limits, such as in uh, the same, same way that is in uh, the word document. So in some, some cells, you have only 85, 150 uh, characters limitation. And when you, um, when for example, uh, in one case, you have uh, different uh, partners on the same work package, you will, you will see, you can, you have to use it's written, you, you use this uh, square uh, um, parenthesis and you use one plus two plus, meaning partner one plus partner two plus, so it's all there, okay? I could go through all of them, I mean, but you have to read it and to, to get acquainted to it. Okay, um, let's, let's work a bit, instead of uh, blah, blah, blah. In this first table, you will put your uh, timetable. It's very uh, simple. You have at the, uh, at the top of the, uh, of the uh, tab, first of all, you remember the golden rule, read carefully everything. <laughs> not only the small characters, but read carefully. Take time in reading it. Oh, okay, I understood. No, you don't. Check it out again. Cross-check and, and so Be sure that you understand very well, okay? On the, and obviously, you get some, some help because you have, um, um, let's say, uh, yellow fields that are, call your attention. So here, for example, you have a, a field which is the first select a type of action. You don't have choices. Also, it's a help because if you, you think you are somewhere, here you, you, will, you will know you are here, you are there. When I entered the plane in, um, in Venice, I said, are you going to Bari? Yes, yes. He wanted to be sure that the guys entering to the plane were going to the right destination. So you do the same. It's, it helped you. So you select, in this case, multi, multilateral project. And here you have... Uh, 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 let's say uh, uh, maximum project duration automatically, automatically uh, selected. Let's select something uh, accompanying me measures 12 months, etc. Oh, sorry, Antonio. Um, at the right part of the, of the tab, you have five main fields of uh, type of activity which are uh, management, implementation, quality plan. You see quality plan out of the management? That's why I suggest a special work package for that. Dissemination, exploitation, and then you have these codes, uh, MNGT, IMP, blah, blah, blah. 
So, when you look at the tab, the Sinistra, Primo Sinistra tab, you have the work packages. And you see that you can, you can have at least 20, 22 work packages. Well, so here, the second uh, column, you will uh, select the type of work package you're starting to, to uh, fill. So, <clears throat> this means that uh, management is management, quality plan is quality plan, dissemination is quality. So, in implementation, you have all the rest. For example, if you uh, work on the concept uh, of a learning method, it will be implementation. If you work on the, uh, um, the survey, for example, the, the mapping good practices, this is implementation, etc. Or if you, for example, uh, the result, one of the main results of the project is to build um, a set of videos, uh, movies, it will be implementation. This is production of something. Okay? Is that clear? Would you like to have a little break before or something? Are you okay? Another 45 minutes? 40 minutes? This part is more or less okay. After that, you have uh, uh, the third and uh, the fourth column, which are uh, start and duration. So, for example, if I select management, okay, I intend that it will start on the first month. Yeah, you, you don't. Obviously, uh, you, you, have, you, you know that uh, the project will start and will end. You're not sure if it will start on the 1st of uh, uh, October 2013 or if it will start on the 1st of November 2013. So you, first months, and obviously you will manage your project until the last months. And your project, by the way, is uh, two years. Okay, when you do that, you have automatically, the, the tab automatically selects the two years duration for you. Okay? It's funny, yes, it's very funny. I like it too. Is what? There isn't uh, in advance uh, of the one of the uh, Here? No. Or here? Oh, this part is white? Okay. Ma. Ma allora, è il, è il computer. Um, <laughs> this is working. Um, after that, uh, let's say that I will. Uh, Let's say that I decided to fill this uh, according to my, my logic, which is management, uh, uh, then the survey, quality, you know. Uh, so I, I'll do it my logic, okay? And I decided to start a survey, mapping, uh, for, uh, I'm sorry. I'm so bad at numbers, I even choose the wrong cell. <laughs> Where is the... Uh... And uh, my survey will take me six months. Okay, so you see it's user-friendly, nothing special. You feel it all the way, and don't forget to put here all your work packages. It's easy, but I mean, this is concentration, this is focus. Don't do this alone, I mean, tired at midnight. Be very uh, aware about it because if you start uh, as a lot of things in life, if you start wrong, you will, unless you're very... Uh, so you fill all the work packages according to your 95% project that you, you, you build. Yes. Form. 
Well, actually, in this, this part is not a Gantt chart. It will, it's the same. I guess, I guess when, when they open their file with their tools, it will look at, it will be a Gantt chart. But you must. Exactly. There is, for example, non under uh, FP7 or uh, Europe 8, you build your uh, Gantt chart, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with the skill, uh, Sector Skill Alliance application that was in uh, August. Well, you had to build a Gantt chart. But not, not here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, um, the same way uh, European Union, the EACA work with the uh, logical framework approach, they also use Gantt charts. And I suspect they use in some bigger project PERT charts. So what I think is you, these tables are simple. They don't they don't uh, create a Gantt chart, but it's built, it's a part of a Gantt chart building. So when they receive that, they put it on the, their system and it, they, it will show them a Gantt chart. And looking at the Gantt chart, they already know if the project is, is solid or not. Well, it might be interesting to think about that if you have the possibility to, I, I have, I work with people, uh, specialists on Gantt charts and I ask them to, to build it like this way, even for a small scale project. Okay? Um, I'm, 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 I'm changing a bit my system. Instead of going through the thing, because you can't see anything, then I'm doing the thing, okay? I change it, because you... It's una bella matina, matina. Okay, so you go through this uh, timetable and you fill in all the um, all the uh, work package packages. Cinq deux trois. So I'm very ahead. Let me see just if I have something special to say about. I didn't look at my, my, my Gantt chart model. Um, I'm, I'm ahead, uh, I decided to, to jump uh, sessions module to be more practical because only talking you will not follow me. So, um, Do you have any anything to to ask me on this on this part on timetable before we go to uh, the other one, the next one? No, is that okay? Please, some example for um, the quality plan costs. So, what's a quality plan? What's the point? Yeah, uh, all the project I work on, I have a quality uh, work package, and I would say that. Um, my quality work package starts at the same time at the project management and have a duration of 24 months. That's my way of... Uh, but it's perfectly uh, um, acceptable to include the work package, the, the work, the activities on quality on the work package uh, management. I, my feeling is, well, it's a bit... Um, it's a bit, uh, how you say that in English, it's a bit a question of uh, sensi sensitivity. You look at the table. So I decide, the I can decide, there is not a... Um, there's no rule. There's no rule, I can decide what's a quality cost, what's a management, no, what's a management cost, what's an implementation cost, I can decide uh, 
into No, 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 they are. We are only at the timetable right now. You will see that there they are. Sure. But uh, when I chose to um, uh, a uh, the activity for a quality plan, I can choose uh, by myself. There is not a role. This is a kind of uh, activity for the quality pa uh, plan. Well, well, your question is, um, uh, if I understand well, if you decide to have a quality activity, you will. All project must have at least something. You will have then the notion that your project, forget the European application, okay? Your, pro your uh, activities on the quality uh, topic will have cost and staff, will have uh, duration. These activities will produce reports, manuals. This activity will uh, eventually um, makes you uh, subcontract a uh, specific uh, intervention from an expert because the topic you are addressing is so specific, etc. So you will have a timetable, costs, staff costs and all that stuff. And all this information, you will put it here. Now you come back to the application. In the right place at staff cost, mm -hmm. at equipment cost, at travel cost, etc. etc. So whatever you will have to do to build your project, you put it here. Even quality, whatever. Whatever you have to do for your project, you put here. If it's quality, and if you decide to build your project with a, a work package only with quality, then at this point, you select, you do what I've been doing uh, right now. You select the quality work package, in my case, number two. You decide if you are going to have this activity from the first to the last month, and etc. And then the cost you are going to consider are your costs. When you build your project 90% 90, 90 and you start building your project with the European, you will see that there are differences between what you... That's what this um, uh, lady was saying. The manager uh, that she worked with have a cost of uh, 440 euros, which is much more than the 247 euros of Italian sailing cost. So at some point, your project on some kind, some aspect will not match what Europe is uh, um, ready to offer you, to give you, to co-finance. So at that point, you'll have to, okay? Most of the time, when I start, when I'm ready, I already know my project costs, for example, 575,000 euro. So when I've, I have my first draft and my first budget, I already know that I'm over uh, for this program. So either I look for another program, such as, for example, Europaid, which is cooperation, or another Eurostar, or I say, no, no, this is too much uh, Grundvig multilateral project. So let's be uh, less ambitious. Let's cut the project in two projects. The first one is here, the second one maybe next year. Okay, and then some information on the co-financing and uh, the budget for the co-financing. I don't know in a multilateral project uh, how to use the, that voice in uh, I, I didn't uh, co-financing co co cost. So, uh, I costi di cofinanziamento. Cofinancing cost usually. Uh, well, uh, uh, yes. You will see on the table there are many. Uh, I don't know this kind of project, so I don't know where to write. Uh, you to will see that uh, today. There is a tab for staff cost where you put all the days that the staff and per category will uh, uh, work on the project. So you will put there the number of days and you put the number, the, the, the selling costs and all that stuff. So you will have a tab telling you how much is your staff cost on the project. Then you'll have the equipment, travel and subsistence, subcontracting, and you will have other costs 
that are not that are eligible but don't have a table a tip to to put in which are considered the the seven percent indirect cost I'll show you on the um, I should maybe show you uh, already on the it's just I didn't show you that because I'm not sure you can see can you see something no the slide is awful it's written very small and so that's why I'm um, so here I can I can tell you for example eligible costs okay at that point I will tell you now before looking at the, the table but I will repeat it so you have the two you have uh, this eligible cost uh, uh, there is a list of, of, of t type of costs but it, we could what's important what what's important is for you to understand what are costs by this meaning what they are talking about the, the the philosophy of the cost so eligible costs must be current meaning actual okay recorded it means that uh, they must eligible cost means cost that will be considered in the accountancy book of the companies and even cost that you can tr trace the last year for example you say yeah my staff cost me uh, 200 euros uh, a day prove it well check the time the time the payroll sheet of the staff it's there recorded uh, the eligible costs also are costs that are foreseen you've been considering this cost in your project it's not something you will invent in the middle of the project oh by the way I have to make a trip somewhere no they are foreseen if a cost you are doing during the project is not in the table at the time you applied bye bye it's not eligible Maybe you can send an email to the executive agency. Oh, I'm sorry, mea culpa. We need this. We need to do that. It's important for the pro project. You, you have a rationale of that. You can ask for a change. It's allowed. Okay? I mean, it's not the Inquisition. Huh? If your project is selected, it's because it's good. It's because they consider it's valuable. They give you value. So don't hesitate to tell things, to tell. Be straightforward. I make a mistake. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. This is wrong. This will affect the project. But obviously, don't make mistakes that are really a bit, uh, I mean, not stupid. I don't like this word, but uh, you know, you have to, to, to understand the, also the you have to you have to understand the re reasonability of things be reason, reasonable reasonable cost must be also justified it's, coffee is very important for me every day I have three four coffees believe me I have all the, the bills of all the projects I have a bag of bills of coffee I'm just kidding just to give you an Im image you spend 50 cents, justify it. Um, the cost must be incurred, incurred means created by the partners. Okay? It means that uh, the, the, cost, the, 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 the cost that you did was, was done by your staff, by your organization, not from somewhere. Don't put a bill that have nothing to do with the, with the company working or the staff working on the stuff incurred created by okay cost must be reasonable and necessary I'm not sure the coffee is a reasonable cost so uh, you must really uh, consider that everything you are going to spend on your project is really important for the success of the task of the project of the result everything blah 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 of the project be careful with the trips with the journeys with the travel don't travel too much it's not necessary it's important to have four or five meetings but 
Keep it low, for example. Be reasonable. But also, if your project is about... Uh, have, have a rational, if your project has some, some reason, perfectly justified, and you need, for example, I don't know, uh, I, don't, I can't find right now a reason, but if, you're, if you're, your rational is solid on travels, well, okay. One of the projects I've been working with was not approved because they uh, considered too much money was given to the management work package. They, they, they said, uh, you guys are bureaucrats, are you going to do a project or are you just going to manage? We were not reasonable. We missed the point. We should have put more money on the work package, on the activities. Uh, cost must be also project generated, not only by the partner, by the staff of the partner, but by the partner, by the product, project. Okay? Uh, the costs obviously have to be directly linked to the project. Okay, you find a bill and you... No, it's, it's there. It's logic. That's why, for example, you have this uh, world, word in the guide saying foreseen. And it's there. By the way, you will learn also that uh, your project is approved, you got the money, you start the project, and you actually... Um, you, you, you use the table, the budget table, to, to uh, uh, monitorize, monitorize the, uh, the project. Okay? You will use it during the project to, 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 uh, to match what you, you're actually doing with what you've been uh, for, uh, you foreseen. You will see that. Um, then you have, I mentioned that, you have the staff costs, the subsistence and travel costs, the equipment, the subcontracting, and other costs. Other costs are the costs that are not, uh, you can't find a tape or a place to put them. You will see that uh, with the project uh, uh, that I have with me, a, a budget table all fill in. But before look, uh, showing you that uh, <laughs> I have this, uh, the effect is niente uh, because you can't see it. This is my accountant, uh, it's not my real accountant, but it's how he looks when I work with him. Uh, okay, um, something I would like to add before going uh, further. On the cost effective and cost impact. You will, you will, have, you will have on the um, um, MS Word form uh, a, a, a box where you have to explain the cost effectiveness of your project. We've been talking about that yesterday and the day before. And, um, well, it's, it's a bit difficult for me, which I'm not a specialist and accountant, and, and, but as a project manager, the, the example that I, I used to find a job in Italy, uh, spending only 100 euros, this is cost effective. I didn't have to, to, to go to Italy. I didn't spend too much money. I used uh, internet tools. This is Really, 100 euro to find a job? Come on, this is cost effective. Okay, sometimes you have to, when, well, when you're working international and you go to different places to, to interview, it costs uh, money. Um, on cost effectiveness, you have to think about ratios, how many, how the duration versus the number of, uh, the, the quantity of money, the number of staff you involve and the result you will uh, uh, manage. You understand? It's a bit difficult to, to talk about ratios and flows. Uh, the scope also, for example, if you do one action, which will uh, result in one result, it's not very cost effective. If you do one thing and you manage to do a lot of things. If, if I leave uh, Italy, and uh, within uh, three months, you guys, 50% uh, of you guys, you people, uh, start building a project and 10% uh, of you are approved. This was a very cost-effective event. If none of you go on the project, it, will be not so, it won't be so cost-effective. You see the... It's just images. 
um, a combination of tools. For example, if you uh, manage to use uh, Skype, Gmail, and uh, LinkedIn, it will result. Uh, it will bring you a better result, for example, than just maybe uh, emailing. No, my LinkedIn account. You go there and say, "Hey, oh, okay, I know what you've been doing for the last 20 years. Okay, I know a bit. Okay, I have my resume on the. So it's effective." Um, yeah, for example, uh, we use, uh, because of the MDGs, uh, Millennium uh, Development Goals, I use a lot of second-hand equipment, okay? The, 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 the iPhone they, they stole me at the airport in Lisbon was a third-hand handphone. From, uh, the, I, I think it was the first one. Because I don't want to, I want to be effective on, on everything I do in my, okay? So if you, use, uh, if you use what you already have, it's very cost-effective. You don't need to, okay? Using the, the, the back side of these papers is cost-effective. All right? Yeah, traveling, for example. Travel more, more days, stay at the meeting more days, and travel less. What you, what you need is to be together. But since different countries are going to gather in one place, then spend more time together. If you need an emer emergency uh, trip between, the, um, the, um, between the, the, the foreseen trips, you will be on your own because you didn't foresee it, and, unless you address the agency and you ask a favor. Okay? You will have to justify the budget allocation, why this amount to this partner, why this amount to the other partners, okay? Uh, I think uh, I could do that, uh, yeah. So, for the last, uh, we'll have a break now, but before that, before going to the, to the staff thing, Let's see if I have another. No, it's better to to break to have the break now. Do you have any question at this point about something I said very fast or? Cappuccino, longo. Okay. All right. Thank you. Grazie mille. I will start. Okay. Or do you want? Uh, do you want some time, Arcangelo? Have you, have you had a good dinner? Oh. Yes. Yes. I um, well, in a very small uh, range, I managed to have a communication with uh, Antonio. Oh. <laughs> I, you know, uh, I like people. You already know that, and really, uh, I enjoy it. Really, it's it's. Uh, I like to be home. I like to be with people. You know. Uh, and uh, I really enjoy it. And it's uh, homemade and, uh, and Antonio, we, we've been, you know, having even some kind of fun because um, he said, uh, he asked me, uh, do you like to, to drink uh, wine? <laughs> do you like to drink wine? I said, yes, but I, I drink uh, molto aqua. Hey, aqua, no, no, aqua, no. <laughs> you know, so, okay. Uh, Sorry? Oh, the grappa was uh, <coughs> um, Bruno. I don't drink, so uh, I mean, I, I drink uh, socially when, when, when I go out. And I only go out when I, when I have the chance to go out because um, it's not often, but uh, I had the chance to, um, 
to enjoy, really. I, I like, uh, mi piace, mi tonto. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, sure, okay. So, let's have, uh, we, we, I don't know, meanwhile, maybe you had some question about what we've been uh, looking at. Uh, you know, all this information you're receiving, uh, what, I, what I suggest is for you to, the next days, if you go on with these ideas, to check the documents, to look at the documents in Italian, because it's available in Italian, the guides, not all the documentation, I don't want to, but the guides, all the call, all the call is available in Italian. Um, and you will, uh, you, will, uh, you will have also the PowerPoints and you will have a, 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 a practical idea of what we've been uh, addressing. Okay, the, um, the second sheet of the uh, budget table is the staff costs. So on the staff cost table, what we are talking about is basically the, and, and you, you noticed, uh, be critical. I don't know if you're familiar with critical thinking, but be a bit critical and be a bit uh, concentrated in, uh, okay, why is this table and why they use, why they use a, 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 a caps lock for this and why not and all that stuff. These are all signs and indication for you. So these are the estimated staff needs and costs by partner for LLP countries. So you have a lot of help. By, on the page, on the tab, you have at all time what is it, what is to be done there, not to mistake with other things. So you have a clear help here to understand what you're going to do there. So, here, all figures in euros, and no decimals. See? They are really very friendly. So you have a country, the country, you have the overall total. This, this obviously, it's quite intuitive, right? You understand that here you will not be able to touch it because it's uh, gray. Then you have the, the, the discrimination of the staff per category. You remember that it's linked with the uh, ISCO, the international standard. So look at the document and understand what's manager. It's intuitive what's a teacher, what's a trainer, what's a researcher. It depends on the level of salary and obviously on the definition of the function of the, the person. A researcher is definitely also a manager, but uh, in this case, there's a difference. Uh, technical staff, Antonio is good technical staff. He manage equipment, it's another level. And the administrative level, I do, in, in some project, uh, I'm all four of them. This is important. You, 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 you remember you build your project on reality. You build your project on reality means you put the staff in the right task, with the right task, which lead to the right cost, uh, to, to the real cost and to the real activity and to the real result. But on a project, one person might have uh, different uh, abilities, skills, competence. I, in my, in my organization, I, um, I uh, um, strongly, I actually it's a policy, I always, my, my, my colleagues engineers, they, they are capable of uh, dealing with equipment, they are capable of writing their own, own reports. This is not the city hall, you know, okay, you take this and write. It's, it's possible in, in some situations, obviously, it's not a problem to give work to an administrative person. What I want to say is, when you decide to put a number here, it means it's a quantity of day of a specific function 
either its management, either okay, a specific function which is linked to a specific selling cost which is linked to a specific activity. So in some projects, for example, the, the, when, when, you, when you have, for example, um, a work package on quality management, and if the work package, for example, is mine, uh, I'll be the only one dealing with the working uh, package eventually, and I'll be in all categories. Because at some point, I will be a manager to manage the, the work package. At some point, I will be a, a researcher or a trainer. At some point, uh, well, in, case, in this case, it would not fit any equipment. But at some point, I will be also an administrative person. So I will apply the cost according to the function, even if my salary is actually maybe more linked to the, the first category. Do you understand what I mean? Here, it's a question of function, task, activity. But it doesn't mean that it must be four different people. All right? All, it's, it's difficult to express here uh, all details because it depends on your project. If you know what you're doing and you've been building your project, you know exactly what to put here because you understand what you're, okay? You're not using the application form to build your project, application forms to build your project. You do that, you do that much before. And maybe you don't go multilateral, you go Eurostar or you go whatever the program. It's the project that will fit the program, it's not the contrary. Well, it's, well you can eventually, if you want to work on the adult education, then you will know that you're going on LLP and you know that you're going to work on Grudvig because that's the purpose of the program. Okay? Clear enough? Uh, let's go back to the... Uh, now the sun is uh, helping me. On the staff uh, sheets, some key points. There is this uh, situation on the working days. Uh, in, in this framework, they consider uh, 20, 220 working days in the year. Well, you know that each, uh, each member state of the, of the European Union have different, uh, different uh, uh, frameworks, legal and tax and social frameworks too, okay? So, what you need to understand is what they mean but by uh, staff cost days and all that stuff okay so there is 220 working days in the year uh, so when you use your real costs let's say that um, you have one person who costs 22,000 euros a year to the company, to your organization, and 20,000 is the gross salary, and 2,000 is the social... Uh, IRS, whatever the, your country costs under this thing. So you want, to, you want to know how much is your staff cost a day. You, this is your accountant talking to you. Huh? This is the staff cost per day of 20, 220 working days. Okay? Um, like I said, use real cost, not sellings. 
uh, use the salary pay lips means the, uh, the the slips that you use for the, um, the your workers now you can link the situation with the contract and legal what is staff staff is uh, legally connected staff whatever the uh, in Portugal you are legal if you have uh, uh, what they call green receipts but until a certain point of duration and you understand staff be clear about that staff means real staff not um, yes I think there's it depend you have to check some specific rules sometimes but it's perfectly all right to uh, I don't know the details of the of this uh, particular rules but uh, uh, since uh, uh, again on the philosophy of the the, the costs foreseen recorded uh, all this you will find the uh, eligibility of the cost and I guess I, I'm, I'm quite sure that at some point because I was um, I'm always, uh, whatever I know, whatever I hear, I'm always going to the, the right place to find the information. And uh, on the 12th of November, even at that time, there was this Italian company that said that her, his national agency asked for uh, something linked with the uh, bank guarantee. And the agency said something contrary, different from the EACA. And it's in the... Um, in the a big document called the uh, financial regulation we will see that uh, there is some kind of a big uh, law um, I think I have it around here I'll show you anyway when I find it there is um, a kind of a, a, a compendium of articles on financial regulation of the whole European budget and it was there, article whatever. He, the, 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 the person who was uh, addressing the, the audience was the specialist of the uh, EECA, and he, need the help, he needed the help of a, a colleague to point the article, but it was there. So the national agency was wrong. So, me, uh, be sure that if you have a doubt, it's when you go to the EACA uh, national agency, uh, the agency website, it's not for, uh, 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 um, there's a good reason for you to, to have the help desk there and to use the FAQ and to use and this year as I told you before there is a new novelty they uh, created a uh, survival info kit on financial uh, issues and situation this is new for the LLP I mean probably in other frameworks with the bigger skills project all is more Current and accurate. Okay, you will you will during your project. This is a kind of a, um, a summary of things you have to remember. That's why I call that key points. Okay, I collected that. I had a meeting with my accountants and and I collected. The, okay, guys, I have to tell these uh, people exactly what to focus, what not to forget. And you have there here some kind of a summary of all that. So you during your project. You know, again, reality. Actually, your companies in the partnerships, in the partnership, are working on a thing, real, and during two years, the thing that you're working on is the project. It's not the contrary. If you do that, you be sure that you be uh, bull, uh, bull eyes on what you're going to put on the project, okay? Again. Um, oh yeah, this, in, in whatever documentation you, you produce during your project, at any kind of point, you always have the, the reference number of the project somehow. This is the quality manual talking. Quality uh, aspect of uh, the management and uh, talking. Um, you obviously register all staff. I have more things here. It means um, you, f you don't forget anyone in the, <laughs> in the middle of the process. Okay. 
you use uh, monthly, you know, at any point of the project, you are to be uh, audited. Any point. Be prepared. There is this big saying, prepared, prepare for the best, plan for the worst. Sorry? At, sorry, maybe the microphone. No, no, monthly reports. The whole thing. What I mean is, at any point of your project, if you called and asked about something, you know, oh, let me check with, let, no, you know, because you have your management uh, work package uh, organized. I mean, <laughs> okay, you have 24 hours. I mean, okay, it's not like this, but uh, if you ask something at any, any level, whatever the work package, not only on staff things, you ask it to um, deliver an information, be sure that you're capable to do so. You remember in this, in this framework, you have these two time per year meeting in Brussels, mandatory, you have two. Generally, you have the top manager of the project go there and they, you have templates that you have to use. We're not there yet, but uh, all the information that uh, the agency needs you to provide is uh, structured under their own system, obviously, because it's, imagine if all of us had his own way of saying things, it would be a, a chaos, okay? So this is, uh, I put that here, but I take uh, the opportunity to tell you at any time you'll be able to say what, you'll be able to give a Polaroid, okay? A picture of what's going on. Again, we are talking about real things. Um, analytical, you remember? When I address that, uh, analytical uh, accountancy? I mean, you want to know what your staff is doing during the day. Where to put the, the, the cost of this day. And because you want, you, you want to know uh, how much the, the, the project costs. Your staff is not doing uh, only this unless you have someone only for that for two years. But you want to know exactly how are you, you are spending your money. Hmm? Um, yeah, signatures. Uh, you will uh, see that, uh, you will understand that at some point uh, it's important. Uh, it's, uh, these are, I think, cross-checks for them. You know, if you have your signature of the staff on the timesheet, if you have the signature of the staff on the uh, presence of the transnational meetings, all that, are, all that are checks. Check, 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 check. Okay? If your project goes well, uh, there's no reason. Uh, I've been uh, involved in uh, uh, three uh, small scale, scale project and one big project, and I've never been aud audited. I mean, the, the, the partner. But be ready for that. I have one, uh, by the way, I'm lying. <laughs> The one for me, one for you project will be audited by our, our national agency. Why? Because uh, we, um, we had some situation with the final report, which is an online application. There was a deadline on the 31st of September. I had my confusion with uh, the robbery and whatever, and the uh, um, uh, health situation. So I expla explained that to my national agency, but either they, they wanted to me to, to do. Okay, fine. They know me, so I have to go there and to report things. It's a small scale project, but be prepared to do that. It's part of the management. <clears throat> Remember that uh, the, um, this is public money. The money you will receive is from your pockets, somehow. I don't know if you're interested in democracy and all that stuff, but it's sensitive. Remember when I said about the staff selling costs and all that stuff, Romania is 51 and all that stuff, all this is a bit sensitive. Okay, payroll costs include, well, that's for your account, ac ac accountant. It's legal pay templates, contracts, attendance, okay? 
It means that uh, when you, you're working on your project, you use the real things, the real uh, uh, documentation that uh, it's applic applicable in your country. Okay? You don't invent a pay sleep template. You have to, for example, on analytical accountancy, you use softwares. The softwares have to be licensed with uh, all the... I guess you're familiar with that. It's not my world, but I know that. You will uh, use the right tax and, 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 and legal uh, compliances. And um, obviously, you, you'll find uh, in a lot of places sound, uh, reasonable. Um, you, you can be a manager and, and, and earn uh, 200,000 euros a, a year. I mean, it, it, it exists. But well, maybe you, if you have uh, people uh, with the very strong capabilities and high skills and a big project, you will not address an LLP, but maybe you will do some research on uh, a framework program, which is a, a program with bigger, bigger skills uh, budgets, okay? So if you, if you apply on the LLP Grunvig Multilateral, uh, we're talking about a medium scale project. You're talking about um, uh, uh, di uh, di uh, specific dimension. Uh, what else? Okay, so not yet, not yet. Be. Let's go to the. Um, oh, this is sorry. Forget about that. Sorry. Bia, Bia? Biana. Oh, Biana, from Macedonia. Sorry about that, it was private. <laughs> Why did you let your Skype linked? Okay, um, so here, you see, um, let me see if I have something else to say then. Number of day, be analytical, payrolls. Yeah, on, on the, when, when you consider the cost of the staff, you consider uh, the pay sheets according to the country law. So you will use the pay sheet. Uh, so you use, for example, the, the, the pay sheet for the, the months and you know analytically that your staff have been involved in the project with, uh, I don't know, in Portugal we have 40, uh, 40 hours a week, uh, 160 hours a month. It means that if I work 35 uh, hours on the project, it will be there, according to my timesheet. Uh, the contract, the accountancy system to monitorize staff costs, even if it's a... Uh, I'm using an image uh, later on, I think. Uh, you have the control of attendance also of your staff. Some manager don't have uh, control of attendance, some have. Uh, some remuneration, uh, remuneration uh, practice comply with tax or so. Okay. So here, for example, uh, you go partner to partner. Maybe it's better to check on the, on this. Can you see a bit? Instead of uh, losing time, maybe showing you an example. Just for you to know, to be uh, this plan project was not approved, but uh, on the criteria of budget, it was uh, five. Uh, it was really good, but they asked for uh, changing the management aspect. So the problem is uh, on the relevance criteria. Uh, we were out of the <laughs> relevance. We missed two points. So we were uh, close to the eligibility, to the success, but not enough. Okay? So uh, here, we were uh, at this point on the country. For, well, first, you, you enter, when you enter the country, you have options on this. I'm doing that for you to have... Um, I'm not... Um, I'm not training you to fill the form. 
believe me, to train you to fill the form, we need some more time. We need to do practical activities. I'm showing you how it works to, for you to have what I call a glance. Okay? In my opinion, my, my colleagues, they spent months on, on checking tables. And the more complex the project, the more time they spent on training on how to use this. And at some point, we use experts. Okay? On the, the, the Sector Skill Alliance, it's only 45,000 euros, but I have 2,000 euros of a Spanish expert to help us because we want to, to be, we want to, it's not a game. We want to know, we want to be able to. This is capacity building. So here, the first column, you have the, you select the country, but this case, this, uh, this case, the partner one is from Finland. And you start by filling the number of, day, of days of your staff. Okay? You forget about this cost per day. You start by filling your, your, uh, you start with that. Then uh, let's say that uh, you have uh, five days here. We give uh, one day to Antonio. <clears throat> and let's say uh, four days for, um, okay. This partner on the wall during two years have these numbers of days for the staff. This is a staff tip. All right? And you do that partner after partner. Partner one, partner two, partner three. So you get <clears throat> something like that. Uh, the sun is back. What to say here? For example, this, all, the, all that I'm, I'm saying are part of the guides. Okay? For example, if you have two or more staff of the same category, okay, you, you, you in, in my organization, I am manager and Yonida also is manager and we will be managing the two. So we make an average of our salary and we put it there. Um, well, if you have a staff that you consider that the, the position, the function is not uh, considered here, you'll have to pick one that is the closest as possible uh, to, the, to, the, um, to the definition, to the category, okay? But you know that, okay? And you can even explain that in the uh, application form, uh, Microsoft Word application form, when you will, you will see that at, at G3 uh, part, you have a, a field called uh, uh, explain the expenditures, uh, part of explaining expenditure. You can mention there. Well, we have this, this person who is not under any category, but he is important for the project, and we considered him as a... You can mention that. Yeah, so when you're filling all this thing, you have your G3 and your, your project uh, built. You know exactly what you're doing, obviously. Um, the day rate tabs, to have a look at is on the uh, guide uh, uh, part one on table five. It's I think it's uh, even the page 44. So all the information that you will, what, what I mean is um, once you've been putting all the um, staff days first for all partners, then you go back and put the uh, costs per day. Okay, in this case, um, 
when, when, you, when you do something, I won't do it right now because uh, maybe it's not uh, easy to, to see, but when you, you fail in, in doing something, you will have message coming up. For example, I don't know, um, I never try, so... Uh, please refer to the tab selling for the maximum account for staff cost per, by country. <laughs> not eligible. Okay, so you have help when you fill in your application form. Okay, um, what else to say? Oh, a technical tip. Uh, any question at this point? Each partner, one after the other. Uh, Portugal had seven days of management, 92 days of trainers, blah, blah, blah. The maximum, uh, the, the, well, in this case, probably my, my cost was higher or something, so we used the maximum. You have um, the gray column at uh, the G column, who, which gives you the total amount, makes the multiplications for you. And if there is something wrong that happens at this point, you have messages coming up saying, hey, you're out. So first, start with the staff, with the, the days. Don't forget about the selling costs, forget about that. Put the days. Any question at this point? No? Um, let me see if I have something else to say. I think not. Okay, thank the thank.